Hi everyone. I got a question and some interest about the gameplay ability targeting actor placement. So I decided to make a video about it. And here's the result. This targeting type is good for, let's say you have a build system and you need to preview the actor you're going to place and then you can cancel or you can confirm. And it works both on server and client. Uh, so the server cannot see the blueprint or the the ghost version of the uh, of the crafting part, but yeah, so you can you can place as many as you want, and that actor to spawn could be any actor. All this logic does is it, it pretty much has this little preview cursor which has the the mesh and it has a certain material to it, and. Yeah, it handles also if you die while you're placing um, and it doesn't have collisions while you're placing. So it can actually lift up the enemy. I actually had to create my own class uh, for the ability target class and I have posted that code inside my GitHub repo. Next part of this video, I'll just show you what happens if you just use the uh, the actor placement that comes with the gameplay ability system plugin. Okay, so I'm actually continuing from the ability targeting tutorial project. So if you haven't seen that one yet, I encourage you to just press the link in the description and, and watch it. It's uh, basically just setting up a confirm and cancel uh, input for targeting enemies or one enemy. Let's actually go ahead and when you, after you open it, um, you'll see. So this is the one for a uh, single player just aiming a single target. And this is the one for the, the sphere. Okay, so if you already have an actor that you have in mind that you want to spawn with this ability, uh, you can go ahead and you can just use that actor. I'm just going to create a new actor for what what is it that we're going to spawn and we want to preview what it looks like. So I'm just going to create a new actor. So just actor and I'll call it be actor to place. Okay, so it's just a it's just a regular actor. It's nothing really special to it. We're going to add uh let's yeah, let's, let's just make it be a wall. So make it face, I guess, X. Okay. And I'll make it a little bigger. Oh boy. Okay. And I'm going to put it above the, the, uh, the grid. So it'll go over the floor. So I'm just going to watch it from the front and just put it over there. I'm going to make it snap. Part one. All right, that looks good. Let's go back to perspective. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So this is the actor that I'm going to want to place and yeah, I'm just going to give this one's uh, this one a material, which is a, a tile, glass tile. Hmm. Yeah, let's just give it the material glass tile one. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. So this will be like what it will look like after you place it. Okay, so now that we have an actor to place, let's go ahead and navigate to your gameplay ability, targeting ability. And so we are going to just start a new weight target data. Weight target data. And let's choose the actor placement. And so the place actor class is my actor to place and then the place material let's search something blue so 
yeah, that little one looks pretty good. Like a, we can create a nice uh, ghost-like uh, material or something that looks like an, a hologram. So once we have a valid data, we're going to print string valid data. So that's pretty much. Uh, oh yeah, and we also want to make sure that it is user confirmed. So the user has to press the left mouse click and the right right mouse click to cancel. So if it's canceled, we're just going to say canceled. Okay, canceled. Okay, and let's make sure to end our ability. So this one's still hooked up to the Y key, which is a pretty weird key to choose, but <laughs> that's what I said. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and play this. Okay. So it was spawning at zero, zero, zero. So what we can do is we actually want the start location from the owner actor. So so you can drag in the start location and then ability make target location info from owner actor all right and then when you play yeah you'll notice that the the location is all right now but for some reason it seems to rotate arbitrarily and it's it's pretty much impossible to set that stuff in Blueprint. So I actually I, I created a uh, I created a new class for the actor placement and the reticle so that the orientation is correct, and it essentially just sets the target actor as the player, and then it calculates the just the the look at uh, direction. Um, so that it faces towards the character. And one more thing we'll want to do is after after um, after we place our actor, we want it to replicate. Um, so I'm just gonna stop this and I'm just gonna make sure that this actor to place actually replicates. Okay, all right. So what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna grab these four code files that I put on the GitHub with the link. Um, and then you'll want to navigate to source, Lara game, ability system, abilities. And then you'll want to paste all these four files right here. Okay. And then just open up your project and compile. And then you'll have access to these new classes. So after you compile and run, you'll have that option. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and in our weight target data, let's choose our new class. So it's just called uh, GA target actor, actor placement face. Naming is hard. <laughs> yeah, so now when we play, it should be facing towards us. Oh yeah. So what happened is that it overwrote the place actor class. So that's why it wasn't showing up. Um, so yeah, the actor to place. And then the material was something blue. So it was just the this blue. Okay. And then let's draw, we could also draw the debug just to see the line trace that's happening. Okay. So now, when you play, it's facing your character. Okay. And now another thing we need to do is after we get that target data, uh, we unfortunately can't query or know what the rotation was of the actor or the placement actor. So we're going to determine from uh, pretty much some calculations uh, pretty much the same logic that the class does. 
So it gets the endpoint and it gets the actor location and it just uh, calculates the the look at or the rotation towards your player. And then we'll just spawn the actor. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy all those and just explain them as I as I go. Uh, okay. All right. So at first we get the target data endpoint, so that's where our line trace was hit. And I don't need those anymore. So if we have valid data, let's spawn this actor. And if we cancel, then let's just end the ability. All right. And the place actor class, uh, we can use the same one for uh, the one for previewing and the one for spawning. So you can just go ahead and right click on this and promote to variable. And what's nice with this is that it actually keeps your the value you had. So the place actor will be the actor to place, and I'll just rename this to actor to place. Actor to place. Okay, so what would be nice about this ability is if you could pretty much input uh, what's the actor you want to spawn. Um, so that would probably be, be driven from, let's say, your crafting menu or your, your build system. Um, so I'm just going to paste this one over here. Okay, so the the issue or the reason why we can't use the actor to place uh, for the spawn actor is that this is expecting an actor or a, a subclass of an actor. But this is a subclass of an object for some reason. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and change that to an actor class. So search for actor and then search for act, uh, class reference and then change variable type and then let's compile. Okay. And now we should be able to connect this actor to, pl to place. And let's try that out. So now when we play, okay. Ah, cool. There you go. Now after you place it, you get a glass wall, which is apparently very expensive. So I might actually change that material to something else. So I'm just going to go ahead and change the actor to place uh, material to just something, something tile. Tile one sounds good. Oh. one. Okay. So now when we play, we can place those walls. So yeah, what's nice about this is that it could be really any actor. So I had a thing to place, which was just this cube. And so this, this targeting ability could take that actor and it will apply the same material. Um, so if it's just, oh, I selected the wrong thing. So if your actor to place is the thing to place, so thing to place. So this could be like a, a roof tile or like a, a water purifier. Um, so yeah, we just changed out one variable. And now when we play, you're going to be placing that cube. So yeah, I just wanted to quickly show um, a little or overview of what what were my code changes. Um, so essentially, the uh, gameplay ability target actor actor placement is a class in the gameplay ability system plugin. And so when you start targeting, it just initi initializes the the reticle visualization. So basically, your your ghost actor. And it gave the targeting actor as this, which was just this placement, and then the visualization actor as its target. Um, so it was creating some interesting 
rotation to say the least um yeah and this uh this function required uh this specific actor so it was like a gameplay ability world reticle actor realization and and all that code you you can't um you can't inherit from this class because it doesn't have that usual uh, gameplay abilities api um linker um so yeah so i essentially pretty much duplicated the class uh, and then the di the only difference is that we have our own uh, world vertical class and so when you start targeting you give it the source actor so your actual uh, the person who's doing the action so that it will know how to rotate itself to face towards you um so yeah this is a good start or a good spot for uh let's say you want to integrate controls to um to rotate the thing that you want to place um yeah so it took me a little bit to go through this. It would be nice if there was a, a good spot to um, to to override the behavior of the the rotation. This process is is pretty interesting how it's it's done, and it's it's nice to have your the vi visualization of what you'll build be separate from the actual blueprint that you will spawn. Um, but still use the data like the static mesh to be able to preview what you're going to build off of the class. Um, so that's what the active visualization reticle does. Uh, it, whenever you initialize it, um, it just pretty much takes all the mesh components and it sets the collisions off um, and it, it makes sure that uh, it doesn't ever affect navigation. So this is all really nice things that are handled for you um, and also takes care of cleaning itself up if you if you cancel or if you confirm and or if your character dies. Um, so it's uh, yeah, it's it's a good tool to to just be able to place things in the world and be able to visualize them.